Hey y'all, and welcome to my YouTube. Today is Saturday, December 11th, 2000 and... I was going to say 11. 2021. I shall, this is day 11, I shall be reading to you all, um, Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 54. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verses 1 through 30. And let us begin. And make sure to check out my other videos as well. It's mostly music, but there's a lot of scripture and prayers too. Anyway, let us begin. And happy Saturday and happy weekend. Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. The Lord's Prayer. He was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. Further teachings on prayer. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, Lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give him the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. The answer to prayer. And I tell you, ask, and you shall receive, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Side note before I continue about the ask thing. Um, how I remember it is that A S K. A is for ask, S is for seek, K is for knock. Ask. A S K. Back to scripture now. Jesus and Bezezebel. He was driving out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute person spoke and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, By the power of Bezabob, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Bezazabub that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Bezazabub, by whom do you own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man 
fully armed, guards his palace. His possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and, and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Sign out again. Um, Joshua, um, I think it was chapter 24, verses something, I can't remember. But anyway, um, Joshua basically says the same thing about, um, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And Jesus is basically saying the same thing here. Okay, back to scripture. <laughs> The return of the unclean spirit. When, all, when an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions and searching for rest, but finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, it finds it swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and brings back seven other spirits more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there. The last condition of that person is worse than the first. True Blessedness While he was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breasts at which you nursed. He replied, Rather, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. The demand for this, a sign. While still more people gathered in the crowd, he said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it, except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. The simile of light. No one who lights a lamp hides it away or places it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, so that those who enter might see the light. The lamp of the body is your eye. When your eye is sound, then your whole body is filled with light. But when it is bad, then her body is in darkness. Take care, then, that the light in you not become darkness. If her whole body is full of light, and no part of it is in darkness, then it will be as full of light as a lamp illuminating you with its brightness. Denunciation of the Pharisees and Scholars of the Law after he had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. Then the Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, Inside, you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools! Did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to, but as to what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be clean for you. Woe to you, Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint and of rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love for God, those you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the seat of honor in synagogues and greetings in marketplaces. 
Woe to you, you are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this, you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe also to you scholars of the law. You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. Woe to you, you build the memorials of the prophets whom your ancestors killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them and you do the, and you do the building. Therefore, the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles, some of them they will kill and persecute, in order that this generation might be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple building. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law! You have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter, and you stopped those trying to enter. When he left, the scribes and Pharisees began to act with hostility toward him and to inter interrogate him about many things, for they were plotting to catch him at something he might say. That was Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 54. And I hope you enjoy those little tidbits, um, those little inserts I did. Um, those two things about um, ASK, the acronym, and the chapter, I think, 24 of Joshua. Um, I know again one of my mom's favorite verses is actually um, Joshua the as for me and my household we will serve the Lord and one time when I was delivering flyers um, for my cleaning job I noticed that they had one of the houses had the same um, Bible verse and they showed that to my mom but anyway Back to the New Testament, back to Luke. Luke's books. Okay. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verses 1 through 30. Chapter 11. Uh, Acts, chapter 11. The, Baptist, the baptism of the Gentiles explained. Now, the apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles, too, had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to the Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky from its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean you are not to call profane. This happened three times. And then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then three men appeared at the house where we were who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discrim discriminating, oh my gosh, discriminating. 
These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa, and summon Simon, who is called Peter. We will speak words to you, by which you and all your household will be saved. As they began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God then God has then granted life giving repentance to the Gentiles too. The Church in Antioch now those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen as went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cripitots and Cyrenians among them, however, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in, in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them to all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarshish to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The Prediction of Agabus At that time, some prophets, some pro some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them was named Agabus. Agabus stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine all over the world, and it happened under Claudius. So the disciples determined that, according to ability, each should send relief to the brothers who lived in Judea. This they did, sending it to the presbyters in care of Barnabas and Saul. And that was Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 30. And again, please check out my other videos, my whole channel, how, however much of my channel you want to see. Um, it has a whole variety of videos on it. Um, again, mostly music. Majority is music. I think the second largest would probably be scripture and prayers. And then the third largest would probably be other. And the, I guess the fourth would be chess, I guess. But anyway, um... God love you, and I hope you're having a wonderful Advent. And stay tuned tomorrow, world. Love you, and God bless you.